So we're here today with uh, Dennis Palatov of Palatov Motorsports um, with his very unique Sidewinder vehicle, super light, about 1100 pounds and we're just going to have a quick chat about that. So Dennis, you want to talk about some background on this vehicle while they're disassembling it? Well, this one was designed to prove out a lot of concepts. I've had ideas for a very long time in my head and uh, decided to see, actually build it and see if it will work. Um, it has, uh, engine is on the side next to the driver and it's actually an all-wheel drive car and the reasoning behind that is that this is the best way to do a lightweight all-wheel drive. The idea is to put a whole lot of power. We have one of them with as much as 430 horsepower. This one's about 350. Um, and at 1,100 pound weight, if you don't have all-wheel drive, then uh, it's just a it's tire smoke machine. Basically. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. So we did that. And as a result, there is some aerodynamic trade-offs in that. Uh, side engine does provide challenges. We can't do a low deck, so we can't merge the flow very well. So there are some limitations. Um, we have um, full under tray, of course, and we've done a lot of correlations. We actually put strain gauges on the car, on the push rods. We measured uh, downforce at the various um, speeds and we decided to mostly do it at 100 miles an hour it's a good uh, realistic number you'll see a lot of people quoting downforce at like 200 well you know we never go to it <laughs> yeah. so it doesn't really matter um, and at 100 it's fast enough to where aero actually matters but it's also within the realistic realm so we do everything at that um, we have um, come up with a number of different tweaks to it and of course the big roll cage that's required for bike speak for safety with the boulders uh, that's a big challenge aerodynamically and it's actually bad enough that uh, by itself it destroys the airflow completely and we have no no downforce at all when the cage is untrimmed but we found out that putting side windows on it, it cleans up the airflow very significantly and we get about 400 pounds overall at 100 miles an hour and we've been able to take CFD and adjust the parameters until we got correlation that's within a few percentage points and so now that we've got we know what parameters we need to use we can rely on that tool quite a bit and we do basically every time sometimes you know almost every day for a month I do an overnight run I just set it up started running it takes about 10 to 12 hours on a you know modern eight core computer mm. with 32 gigs so it does require that much precision because we tried it with lower resolution and lower iterations and it just wasn't accurate yeah so, it's, it's really good to hear like CFD being properly done with correlation high resolution meshes like proper parameters like it, it's great to hear that as opposed to a lot of the time when you see people just using default settings and getting just yeah, nothing. Yeah that just gets you pretty pictures it doesn't get you anything <laughs> usable and what I really like about SolidWorks is that it has an adaptive mesh it will actually refine its mesh best based on the results so far. Oh so you, you use full mesh refinement in like the regions of the vortex cores stuff like that? Yeah and, and it does it, it basically it's an automated meshing tool but of course it's an iterative and you have to set up certain iterations so we have uh, in a, on a typical run we'll, I'll set it up to refine the mesh five or six times at different spots and uh, it would be probably three four hundred passes that it does and throughout that we'll, we'll do mesh refinement and when I look at the finished mesh when the computation is done it's uh, you know it, you can see the adaptation is working really well where there's fine features that require resolution it's very fine and then it's uh, you know roughs out as you get far away from details so I've been very happy with it and you know but like with any tool it's only as uh, it's good, as good as, as the user, as the user <laughs> and yeah you know it's it's a power tool for the mind <laughs> yeah but uh, and I'm not sure if we caught in this video, but what was your downforce number at 100 miles an hour? Uh, it's about 400 pounds. 
At, at 100 miles at an hour? At 100 miles an hour, yeah. That's great. Well, uh, I wish you the best of luck in the, the race you. on Sunday. Yeah, and luck is a big part of it, as you can see. Yeah. <laughs> Half an hour ago, this was runnable. Yeah, it, what I have begun to say is that Pike Peak testing is really means that the mountain is testing us. <laughs> <laughs> it's not us testing. It's, it's that we are being tested. And, uh, yeah, it's a lot of challenges, but it's a lot of fun. It's extremely rewarding. That's why we do it. Great talking to you, Dennis. Cheers.